Walking around London today, it can be easy to forget the past and history. However, you could be easily walking on the graves of dozens of people who hundreds of years before walked the earth, dying of one of the worst diseases that ever hit Britain. When the Black Death came around in the 14th century, it caused chaos across the country, wiping out a huge percentage of the population. Across Europe, it was estimated that around 25 of the whole continent's population were killed, and in medieval England, the statistics were similar. Some villages were completely wiped out by the horrific disease, but in 1665 the disease came around for its final major outbreak in Britain. Such was the severity of the plague that burying the dead became a huge problem, and the disposal of bodies descended into chaos. Today we look at the London plague pits, and how across the city there are dozens of sites that victims of the plague still remain undisturbed hundreds of years later. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. As mentioned, the Great Plague led to a shortage of sites to bury the dead. Usually bodies were interred in consecrated ground, and it's estimated that up to 100,000 people died during the 1665 outbreak. In times of normality, burying the dead fell within the scope of the local parish, with all burials being placed mostly in churchyards, and all parishioners had the right to be buried there. These parishioners set the fees for this to take place. Now when the Great Plague hit, the disease and the nature of the outbreak caused a huge problem. The fact the disease spread very quickly over distances, coupled with the high fatality rates, saw hundreds and even thousands killed each week, and often the way they dealt with the plague caused more deaths. Quarantining plague victims, although would stop the spread to those healthy outside of the home, would ultimately cause the plague to spread inside of the home, and because of this high death rate, families were often wiped out. It is estimated that around 100,000 people died of the 1665 to 1666 epidemic of the Great Plague, which was around 15% of London's population, and around 2% of the whole of England's. Today, many of the plague pits have been documented and mapped, however there are still so many more that have yet to be discovered. In Walthamstow, for example, there is Vinegar Alley, a pit dug and named after the fact huge amounts of vinegar were used around the pit to contain the spread of the disease. In Pitfield Street in Hoxton, a large pit was dug, and today residents are even warned to keep off the grass. Near to the site of St Bart's Hospital, there was a rather shallow pit dug, which is referred to by writer Daniel Defoe in his book A Journal of the Plague Year as an abundance of buried promiscuously occurred there. Where Oldgate Underground Station is, there is a plague pit below. It was said by Defoe that, a terrible pit it was, and I could not resist my curiosity to go and see it. It was about 40 feet in length, about 9 feet deep. It was so deep they could not go deeper for the water. In the centre of Soho today is Golden Square, which although a very busy place, under the ground lay thousands of bodies. It was said that, as in a place far from the haunts of men had been dug, where the Great Plague was raging, a pit into which the dead carts had nightly shot corpses by scores. It was popular belief that the earth was deeply tainted with infection, and could not be disturbed without imminent risk to human life. A small pit near to Hyde Park can also be found. When the Baker Loo line had work completed on it, near to the London depot, there were two tunnels. One leads to Elephant and Castle, and the other is a dead end. There is a runway lane for trains unable to stop. Behind the walls of this tunnel are a plague pit, close to where commuters pass each day. Today there are many of these plague pits that still lie undetected, and the mass graves still remain lost to history. We don't know for certain the amount of people killed by the Great Plague, as the record departments of local councils were so overwhelmed that many of the deaths went unrecorded due to the immense pressure they were under. The parish clerks often died too, and some quit because of the stress. A year later when the Great Fire broke out, many of these records were destroyed but some did survive. The records of St Bridge Fleet Street show how one parish had to deal with a death rate almost six times higher than the normal. Each day often two or three people were being buried and because of this churchyards filled up greatly. In certain areas parishes ordered that no more bodies could be placed in churchyards such was the overcrowding and graves began to be dug deeper in churchyards. In the parish of St Brides, 
Decisions were made to bury no plague victims inside of the church. However, notable parishioners and the wealthy were buried in the upper churchyard. However, the poor were mostly forgotten about. There was also a shortage of coffins at the time, and many of the deceased were just buried in sheets and shrouds. In mid-July 1665, the mortality rate rose, and grave diggers were also in short demand. St Bride's itself was a large area which suffered greatly, however they had acquired around a quarter of an acre of land in 1610, and this was the site around a few hundred yards from the church. This was where a number of pits were dug for the plague, and on this land hundreds were thrown into deep pits. Organised collections of corpses began, and the opening of the mass graves helped them to deal with much of the issue, and the burial of people in a sense became like a production line, someone collecting the dead, a clerk registering the death, the pit having been dug deep before the body was then thrown in. Collection occurred mostly at night to conceal the sheer amount of deaths, however this did not always happen, as the nights drew in and the daylight was needed to collect the bodies. It was during epidemics that the plague pits and mass graves were dug. Some of these pits were dug prior to 1665, when different outbreaks hit the city of London. However, the most of these large pits were in existing churchyards, and they began to become a critical part in dealing with the outbreak. The first pits at St Dunstan's emerged in August 1665, as well as at Oldgate, where a great pit was dug in the churchyard, which became home to a thousand bodies by the end of September 1665. It was said that within a fortnight the pit here had been filled up with 1,114 bodies. The main purpose of the plague pits was to accommodate the maximum amount of bodies in the smallest space possible, and although it often took days to dig and the fact they were expensive, they had to use whatever space in the sprawling city was available. Most of the pits, it's believed, were dug on unconsecrated and unholy ground, and subsequently have been forgotten. Every time there is extension to the London Underground, plague pits are discovered and building work is forced to stop. Recently during the Crossrail extension, a plague pit was found and the construction work was forced to pause for a brief time, but during this bacteria causing the Great Plague was found in the teeth of the victims. Many of the pits were not well documented and still remain hidden today, and it shows us a desperation of the situation. People were digging huge pits to throw corpses into, and many emerged in strange places, not even near to churches or religious grounds. Also, many burial sites emerged close to pest houses, hospitals that were established for victims of the plague to be shut away and treated, but often these were just houses for people to be left to die in. These pest houses often required graves urgently. For example, the pest house in the parish of St Martin in the Fields had a fenced burial ground attached to the house, which was used to dig huge pits for the dead. People from the pest house at Westminster were also buried close in a plague pit. A new churchyard at Bethlehem had been established, however this began to become overused during different bouts of the plague that emerged. It was said that the stenches arising from the great number of the dead buried there, together with the plea from many parishes that their own churchyards were full, caused problems. Mayors were forced to look at different places to try to bury the dead. They had to act quickly to get the bodies into the ground. It was a sheer problem of quantity, how to deal with the huge numbers. The heaviest mortality rates occurred in poorer areas, and they found it difficult as what to do with the dead. Plague victims were often buried quickly within a few days, mostly to avoid a backlog of unburied bodies piling up. Corpses were handled with caution, and the plague orders said that bodies should not be kept in churches, and that people must keep their distance in public. There was a significant degree of panic after the Great Plague epidemic because of the overcrowded churchyards and burial grounds. Orders were given to stop pit burials in certain churchyards and to cover the ground with a fresh layer of earth. In the months after, different parishes had to carry out specific works to improve the structure of the ground, such was the haste to bury the dead. So today in London there are still a number of rumoured plague pits and also sites that have yet been discovered. When the Great Fire of London struck the following year, Many of the records and sites were destroyed, and for this some of the plague pits have been lost to time, and today remain unknown. As mentioned, each different improvement that's either made to the transport network, or when new buildings are created, often plague pits are found in the city. It would be an impossible task today to find out all of the locations of the plague pits in London, but next time you are sitting on the London Underground, or walking around London, think to yourself, are you walking on the remains of thousands of people, 
Are you walking on the victims of the plague? It's an interesting thought to have and links your footsteps to those who walked centuries before. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.